Hello everybody, it's Foxy speaking and welcome to an episode of Foxy's Fun Inspirational Chats. And today I will be your host. And in this episode, this is a story of a man who really was quite of, quite, um, in a way, rather grand in other aspects. This is a man. His name was Murdoch Monmouth. And he owned a shop. It was a very nice little shop, because his shop was in an independent shop located in a nice little town in England, which sold a, a variety of things. His shop was Mr. Murdoch, was Mr. Monmouth's, Mr. Monmouth's Clothes and Toy Shop Company. It was located in Seaford in East Sussex in England. Murdoch Monmouth's shop, Mr. Monmouth's clothes and toys. There were two floors, although it done in an orderly old-fashioned way. One section would have some clothes, clothes for both, both men and women. There were shirts, polo shirts, jumpers, cardigans, fleeces, for, and tops, and dresses, and skirts, and tights, and socks, and all that. All the men's stuff had the shirts, polo shirts, very rarely t-shirts, of all sizes from small to XX large. All done in a very nice fashion. Men's shirts, polo shirts, rarely t-shirts and um, cardigans, jumpers of all types, and um, fleeces, and also coats, as well as um, sometimes on special um, sale was a special suit jacket once a month, was what Mr. Murdoch Monmouth sometimes did in his shop. Sell spe one special suit jacket once a month, but for an expensive price. It was definitely bought but obviously it took time for, a cust for one customer to decide, as can happen in any shop. And with the ladies' clothes, Mr. Monmouth sold, Murdoch Monmouth himself sold very nice ladies' clothes, which var variating from ladies' shirts to blouse, houses, tops, dresses, skirts, jumpers, cardigans, um, Coats slash jackets, tights, socks, loads of types of ladies, as well as children's clothes. And also on the other floor, they sold, he also sold um, children's toys, as well as children's clothes. As well as also selling postcards, showing um, postcards of pictures he himself had taken of Seaford, Bishopstone and Newhaven which he especially sold in his shop. Even though his shop was mainly sold of clothes, of um, clothes for men and women, and toys for children, he also gave an additional selling of postcards. Mr. Mur Murdoch Monmouth mainly worked himself. He only had one helper, because he, he didn't feel the need for, for helpers. Even though it was a good precautionary idea for Murdoch Monmouth to employ two or maybe two or three helpers in his shop, which was reasonably big, but looked very old-fashioned, he could have really done with some help. More help than what he, than he imagined. But, to be honest with you, he didn't really bother. He was just happy to have, to have employed one person. And he would also come to work too, serving the customers on the cashier as well, at the same time as managing his helper. Murdoch's helper was a nice young man named Harry. Although, and this was his first job. He'd been working with uh, Mr. Monmouth for quite a few years. He'd only been working with him for about three years actually. And he was hoping in the next year, he was aiming to train to be a bus driver. 
Sometimes Harry had to finish work early because of his driving lessons and plus. Also, if he were to learn to be a bus driver within the next year, he would still have to keep working until that time next year, even though he'd done three years. He'd completed his driving... Harry himself had completed his driving lessons um, with his car and passed his test, but was spending a few years getting his um, HGV license and... Um, well, license to drive lorries and also his license to drive buses, his bus license, but decided to work for Mr. Monmouth, as he himself lived in Seaford as well, like Mr. Monmouth. They didn't live too far from each other, Harry and Murdoch. Murdoch only lived about five, ten minutes away from, the sh from his shop and Harry walked about a 20-minute walk away from Murdoch's shop. Both of whom were like, a, were like teammates, and were very, very hard-working and got on very, very well. Murdoch Monmouth himself originally had a much larger business, but it wasn't in the shopping retail industry, it was something far, far different. Well, of course, Murdoch, now getting older, about three years bef before he set up his shop, he um, sold his large business, he sold it to someone else, which became a totally different business, as he thought it was time to wind down into something more relaxing and not too hectic, like the retail, for example. Murdoch's shop in Seaford was relatively unpopular, it was a relatively popular shop in Seaford, Mr. Monmouth's Clothes and Toys. One day, as, as it was soon uh, nearly time to close the shop, after a hard day's of work, Mr. Monmouth was, out, was outside um, talking to the delivery lorry as he was getting a delivery for stock with clothes and toys. Just right, just park it right here please sir, said Murdoch Monmouth to the, to the lorry driver who was um, delivering um, his needed delivery for his shop, for his shop stock. All right mate, said the, said the lorry driver, but reversed a bit too far and hit the lamppost by mistake. The lamppost toppled to one side and then crash! It hit one of the windows of Mr. Monmouth's shop. Oh no! Mr. Monmouth groaned. You lorry driver, you've made a terrible mistake. The lorry driver looked out of the window and looked to see what had happened and the silly mistake he had made. Oops, sorry mate, I didn't mean it. Uh, I need to go soon. He said, okay, he said, we need to quickly unload the lorry, said Murdoch swiftly, and then after that I'm going to need an inspection. So Murdoch and the lorry driver quickly unloaded the lorry of stock out of the lorry and put it into the shop stockroom. Soon the lorry left, but Murdoch had to ring for an inspection. So he had to say all had to say all customers shopping for your last bits and bobs of your shopping, we're gonna have to close early because of an accident. So all the shoppers who were shopping for their last doing their last minute shopping of clothes and toys for their children, they purchased all their items and subsequently left the shop respectively. Whereas once all the customers had left the shop, Murdoch rang, rang up on his telephone for an inspection. The inspector arrived within the next half hour and inspected the damage of the window. Hmm, the inspector said, Well, Mr. Monmouth, it looks like you're going to need some builder's work. I'd recommend you close your shop for a week to get your window fixed. Mr. Monmouth's heart sank. 
He was a hard worker despite getting up being fairly elderly. But he respected the, um... But Mr. Monmouth respectively respected the inspector's, um, recommendation and took his advice. OK, Inspector, said Mr. Monmouth, said Mr. Monmouth thoughtfully. I'll ring the builders first thing in the morning, but we'll, I'll put a sign up to say sorry we're closed for one week. Soon he closed up the shop after the day's work. Harry said goodbye and said, I'll see you next week, Murdoch boss. He said, yes, I'll see you next week as well, Harry, said Murdoch to his, um, to his employee. E. Harry, and Harry waved and walked back home, and Murdoch walked back home too. But once he arrived back home, he said hello to his much-loved wife and their beautiful little cat. At, um, oh, so he said hello to his wife and their beautiful little cat, Diane. Then, Miss Murdoch Monmouth rang up his telephone, ringing up the Builder Society, a company of a builder's company. Uh, hello, it's Mr. Monmouth speaking. Well, Murdoch Monmouth speaking, said Murdoch, clearly on the telephone. Um, I need... Oh, hello, said the, uh, said the CEO of the Builder's Company. Uh... How can I be of your service? Um, I need a builder to help um, put in a new window as one of my windows got got broken by a fallen lamppost in my shop, said Murdoch to the, to the CEO of the building company. Oh no, said the CEO of the building company. I'll send a builder over tomorrow and then he'll head back over to me and then we're going to set back to work on your um, broken shop window within two, within a couple of days. Okay, brilliant, said Mr. Monmouth. I shall see you then. And then he put the phone down. Then he respectfully had dinner with his wife. He fed his cat, Diane. Then later on, he took off his clothes, put them in the laundry, brushed his teeth, got into his pyjamas, and went to bed, but obviously worried. The next day, <coughs> the next day, Murdoch Monmouth went to his shop, although he'd closed it to, um, to public shoppers. After a slight wait, a builder arrived. Hello, said the builder, you must be Murdoch Monmouth. Hello, Murdoch said to the builder. Uh, yes, I am. I need to show you what had happened. OK, then, said the builder. Let's have a look. So they walked up the stairs, and Murdoch Monmouth showed the builder the broken window. Oh, dear, said the builder. That's a big window smashed. I'll ring up the boss, and we're going to get um, the window fixed. It might take about a day or two to get fixed or it might take even about three or four days, but you should be able to reopen um, your shop in less than a week's time, said the builder. That's brilliant, said Murdoch Monmouth. I'd closed my shop for one week after yesterday, and uh, so if you can get the window done by then, that's brilliant. They'd come to an agreement. The next day, work began on the broken window. The builders worked carefully to move the broken window. Obviously, the window was quite hard to move and very fragile as it was broken. But first, they had to move the lamppost first, which had to be taken away. And obviously, a new one had to be built by the East Sussex County Council. It took a long time for the organisations to get the wind, the new window fixed into view, but before long, by tea time, 
the new window was fixed in. The work was done fixing Murdoch Monmouth's shop window, although there was a young man out there taking some photographs. Hmm, said the, said the man. When Mr. Monmouth's shop is opened, I think more people than ever are going to visit when I report this and publish this in a little magazine, or newspaper, or in a little ad. And so that was what he did. A week had passed. Murdoch Monmouth welcomed back his, co his um, employer, Harry, who worked for him. And the shoppers, some new shoppers, happily came in. But then before long, a huge bustle of shoppers came into the shop. Murdoch was surprised by the numbers of shoppers. Usually he gets a, a nice lot of shoppers in his shop buying things from it, but there were more than what he would usually see. How did you see, did you know about my shop? Murdoch asked. I may be a fairly popular shop, well my shop may be fairly popular, but I've never seen so many people in my shop. Before it's like, it's like a shopping mall now all of a sudden. One man said, this was, I saw this in an ad. And all the others said, we saw this in an ad, and we shared this with our friends. And that's how we found out about your shop. Apparently your shop does wonderful service and sells wonderful clothes and toys. Yes, that's true, said Murdoch. Feel free to come in my shop any time, he said. And now, after what had happened, following the terrible accident at his shop, more people than ever come to Murdoch Monmouth's shop. And Murdoch and Harry are as busy as ever now. But Murdoch Monmouth couldn't be a happier man with his new business following his subsequent downsizing from his previous business. And Harry couldn't be happier, even though he hasn't got very much long, longer left with Harry, because of course he has his dream to pursue his career in bus driving. The end. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And thanks indeed for watching, everybody. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs> From Foxy. And I shall certainly see you in the next Foxy's Fun Inspirational Chats episode. Ta ta. <laughs>